Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's Jan Howell from YouMakeItSimple.com. I love wearing aprons. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to sew this gathered half apron. It's a simple beginner sewing project. It only takes one yard of fabric. I'll be giving measurements for an adult size and a child size. And these make really fun gifts. And of course, just like my other sewing tutorials, I'm going to be giving you lots of good tips that you can use for other sewing projects as well. So watch the whole video and let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Let's go over the items and things that you'll need. So it only takes a yard of fabric. This is a quilting cotton fabric piece and there's so many different options. I have picked out a few other colors that I'm going to make aprons with. You'll need a pair of fabric scissors, a rotary cutter and ruler and mat really comes in handy for cutting straight lines, but you can just cut them out with scissors if you need to. You'll need some pins, a seam gauge or a measuring tape and a turning stick, your sewing machine and an iron, a seam ripper if you have one. And if you want to apply a label or a tag, have that handy. So for this particular apron, I'm going to use the red as a contrasting color for my waistband and my ties. The first thing that we'll do is cut out the apron and then we'll cut out the ties. When you purchase cotton fabric from the store on a bolt, most likely it's going to be about 40, 44 to 45 inches wide. And we need a strip that is at least 90, 80 to 90 inches for the waistband and the ties. So to get the length that we need, we'll need to sew a couple strips together to get that length. The adult size apron will be 44 inches by 20 inches. For a child, we're gonna cut it 26 by 16 inches. The first thing that we'll do is square up the edges and cut off the salvaged edge. So let's do this with this particular piece. Most likely when you get your fabric from the store, the edges, the cut edge is not going to be straight. So we want to make sure that we're starting with a straight edge. And how we'll do that is make sure that the selvage edges are lined up. We'll smooth that out. And we'll line that up on one of the bottom lines here. And then let's cut the 20 inches. Now, if I were using the same fabric for my ties, I would then go ahead and cut two, two five inch strips. So you'll need two five inch strips cut at 44 inches as well but let's finish this fabric by cutting off the selvage edges. And all you need to do is align your ruler with the edge of, and you can see how the print usually stops at the selvage. And on this side it doesn't, but there's some weirdness in the like little holes and things, and you don't want to have that in your finished product. So let's cut that off. It's not real important if this ends up being a little wider or if this is, a little smaller because we are just going to be gathering that up so you can be lenient with that but that ends up so we're not having to make another cut and measure this makes it just really simple that this is about 44 inches now let's cut out our ties I have squared off the edge of this piece of fabric now I'm going to cut two five inch strips if your ruler is five inches or more you can use you don't really have to line up this bottom grid I can just use the five inch mark on the ruler. I have the finished edge on my left. If you're right-handed, I'm going to line up the five inch mark and cut out the strips. For the waistband ties, we'll be sewing this whole strip, piecing it together if we were to just piece the two together, then we would have a seam 
right in the center and right at our belly and we don't want that so we're going to offset that simply by taking one of the strips and cutting it in half. And to make that one continuous strip, we are going to place right sides together and sew down that edge and place this one on this side and sew down that edge. And we'll use just a quarter inch seam allowance for that. I have a universal needle in my machine, which is 9014. I have set the stitch to a straight stitch, the length at two and a half. And I'm using a, just a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Press the seam allowance open. And I'm going to set that aside for a minute. The next thing that we'll do is hem the sides and the bottom of the apron. And to do that, we're just going to do a rolled hem, fold that side edge under a quarter of an inch and press all the way down. Then fold it over again a quarter of an inch and press. And I'm loving my new cordless iron so nice not to have that cord in my way. We'll do that for the other side. And for the bottom of the apron, we're going to fold it under a quarter inch and then we're going to make the bottom edge a little bit bigger. You can always make it smaller if you wanted to. I find a good length is to fold it under a quarter inch and then another one and a half inches. Now something to mention here, if your fabric has a one-way print like this particular apron, the flower stems, we wouldn't want those, we want to make sure that that's hanging correctly. If we were to put that upside down, make this top, that would look kind of funny. So if your fabric has a distinct pattern, make sure that it's facing the right way. So let's go down to the bottom edge fold it under a quarter, iron all the way down, and then fold it another one and a half inches. And this is where you'll want to grab your pins and your seam gauge or measuring tape. I'll backstitch at the beginning and we'll be sewing just along the inside of that fold there. And sew all the way down to the end. A few back stitches. I'm going to cut my thread and then sew along this bottom edge just inside the fold. So just a little tip here that helps. It's easier on the eye than just sitting here and trying to focus on that inside of there is to place a piece of painter's tape where the edge of the fabric is going to be. That'll just help you guide that along a little easier. And pivot that and sew all the way down this edge. Now to make the gathers along the top side of the apron, there are a lot of different techniques and methods to do that for different projects and I'm going to go over that in another tutorial. But for this project, we are simply going to sew two rows of basting stitches along the very top edge of this apron and then we'll gather it. Now I know some folks like to sew three rows but I find that 
two rows will be sufficient for this size of a project. And I'll explain why you sew multiple rows in just a minute. I am going to set my machine to a long, a straight stitch, but I'm going to set the length to as long as it will go. And that's usually four and a half or five. And you do not want to back stitch at the beginning or at the end. I want to sew this first row about an eighth inch from the top. And in order to do that and have your presser foot, if I were to put my presser foot down and have the edge there, it would be like a 3 8 inch seam allowance and that's a quarter, but it's really kind of hard to eyeball. So I'm going to, let me show you a trick and most machines will allow you to do this. I'm going to put my presser foot down along the edge of the fabric. So my machine allows to left or right shift the needle. I'm going to shift it to the right as far as it will go. And that's usually 20, I, what I want it to be is like 0.25 or 0.50. And that has shifted my needle position way over here so that I'm getting that really narrow seam allowance, which is really quite so nice. I'm gonna lift up my presser foot before I put my fabric in there and pull out that thread a bit. Put my presser foot down not going to back stitch and just begin to sew. When I get to the end, lift up your presser foot, turn your hand wheel towards you so the needle is in the upright position so that you can just pull the thread out and we're going to leave quite a long tail and clip the thread. That's one row. Pull that down and sew another row. I'm going to bring the edge of my presser foot along the edge of that first stitching. Once again, I'm going to leave a tail of thread. No back stitching. Another thing to mention is you do not want to cross over into this seam. It doesn't matter if they're exactly straight, but you do not want to cross over or that you will not be able to gather the fabric. So there are the two rows. Now some people do that third row, but we're going to try it with just two and that's what I usually do and see how we do. Grab your seam ripper and we're going to use it to separate these threads on the edge of the fabric. Now, you don't want to cut them, so I'm using the back edge of the seam ripper to just slide it underneath. We have four strands of thread hanging off here. We want to separate the top threads from the bottom threads. And I'm just going to take those top ones and pull them over to the right. And I have found that pulling the, bot the two bottom threads just work, they slide a lot better than pulling the top thread. That's just in my, with my experience. So well, all you do is just hold that and start pulling the fabric down. Now there is a chance that one of those threads might break and that's okay because we have a second backup. That's why some people really like to sew that third one. But I find, especially if you have lighter weight fabric, if you have a thicker fabric, I would probably sew a third row. But see this is sliding pretty nicely. I'm just going to slide that. Just continue to pull the fabric down gently to the end of this side of the apron. And we're working towards getting the apron to be 20 inches wide. Now if you just continue to pull that down, it's just going to slide off and you'll eventually run out of thread. So what I like to do is take just two of those threads and give it a little pull and so that when we pull it this direction it's going to kind of locks it in place so that's a kind of a handy trick and then we'll smooth it all out once we get it to the length we want. I'll continue to pull those long threads. I have evened out all the ruffles and it measures 20 inches so that's what we want so just take 
your time to smooth out and even out the, the gathers. And we're ready to pin this on to the waistband. I'm going to mark the halfway point of the waistband slash ties with a pin. And I'm also going to fold and mark the halfway point of the apron. Bring the right side of the ties waistband facing up. So wrong side to the right side, line up the center points and we're just going to pin this in place all along this the top of the apron. Having that two or three rows of stitching just helps those gathers lie a little bit more flat and makes it nice when you're pinning it to a waistband of a skirt or whatever you're doing. Now we'll take it to the sewing machine and using a 3 8 inch seam allowance which is, is the edge of your presser foot starting at the edge of the apron and sewing down to the end. Make sure you have changed your needle position back to center and the length back to two and a half. That'll get you that three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now if you have the option on your sewing machine to, uh, to adjust the needle position up or down, I like to adjust it so when I stop the needle stays down. That alleviates a lot of shifting in the fabric. If not, no big worries. Just make sure that you're, when you stop and adjust, that the needle stays in the same place. I'm just using my left hand to smooth out the ruffles to the left. And with my right hand, just holding onto the right side. on the apron to the waistband ties. Let's just take the apron and open up that seam and give it a good pressing so that we have a nice finished edge there to work with. Flip the apron open and now we're ready to sew the ties. Now a usual method is to just press every side of the tie under the seam allowance and then sew it together. But I find that's really cumbersome and I think this way, I'm going to show you another way that's I think looks better and is much easier. So we'll take the ties and place them right sides together, line up the edges and pin it in place. and just pin down till about two inches away from the apron. And then I'll show you what we'll do next. So do that on both sides. Take it to the sewing machine. We're going to sew down the side of the tie and down the unsewn edge, just about two inches away from the apron and then we'll back stitch. So get the other side ready to sew by lining up the edges and pinning in place. I'm gonna leave that top edge open for now. So let's take it to the sewing machine. And I'm using just a 3 8 inch seam allowance and backstitching at the beginning. When you come to the corner, leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot and pivot and just continue to sew all along that tie edge. Be sure to remove your pins and then we're going to stop just about two inches away from the apron and back stitch. Do the same thing on the other side. Grab your turning stick and now we'll turn the ties inside out by just poking it in the end there and working it out to the opening. Poke out the corners with the turning stick and then you can just gently pull that and we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll give it a good pressing, poke out the seam allowance so the edges are all the way out 
and then when we come down to that opening make sure that those seam allowances are folded under evenly and lined up and just pin that in place now we're ready to fold that bottom edge under the 3 8 inch seam allowance and we'll just do that all the way down flip it over and then take the top edge and bring those folded edges together and line them up. Well, this is a good place to take out that bottom row of basting stitches, that, those gathering stitches, if you want to. You can do it later, but I like to take it out now so it's not confusing when I'm looking for that seam line, that stitching line that I need to line up. And you can just pull those threads and they usually come out really easily. So we have that bottom seam line that we're going to use as our guide. Fold down the top edge and bring the folded edge just past that stitching line on the apron. And so that will hide the stitching and it will also align with the other side, the back side. This is such a nice way to do a, a gathered waistband. So take your time to line up that folded edge just past the seam allowance and then press that top edge. Again, making sure that apron tie is folded under the seam and lined up. I'm going to get a press and then we'll take it to the sewing machine and top stitch. You can sew along the top and the bottom, but I just like to sew along the bottom edge. Back stitch, sew down the side, and then along the bottom edge. When you get to the apron, just continue across. Now I have adjusted my needle position to the right again so that I can get that 1 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna adjust my machine, my needle position to the right. You can do a quarter inch seam too, it just depends on the look you want. Backstitch, and you can use the presser foot, which I really like, along the edge of the fabric and still get that narrow stitching. When you get to the apron, just keep your ruffles out to the right, remove your pins, and sew that eighth of an inch along the waistband, all the way down to the other side. Give it a final pressing, pressing out those ruffles and pleats. And if you want to add a label or a tag somewhere on your apron, which really is kind of fun and gives it a little bit of character and unique look. If you want to learn how to make your own labels and tags, I have a video tutorial showing you step by step how to do that. It's really quite easy. So don't you think that turned out pretty cute? I have made another apron with a contrasting waistband. You can see how cute that is. And I'm getting ready to make one out of this cute red plaid fabric. Thanks so much for joining me. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do that. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you want to learn how to make a few other different types of aprons, I have a utility apron, I have a full apron. You can also find those on my channel and get the patterns on my website, youmakeitsimple.com. Have a wonderful day, have fun sewing, and we'll see you next time. Bye.